So, hello everybody, Sir John Spencer. I um, decided to try to begin a structured introduction and explanation of the practice and revelation of the practice of Vipassana. And so, before beginning, at the beginning, I would like to explain what is the first third of the many different sections of the practice of Vipassana when it is defined academically in its complete entirety. It is not as complex to practice as it is to study, but anyway, the first of the three parts, and there will be many podcasts to cover all parts, even the first part, I have to make many recordings, so the first of the three parts is going to be split into many parts and that first of three parts is going to contain the following topics. I shall begin with explaining what benefits of Vipassana are. And so really the benefits explained to somebody entering on entry level with no experience has to be one explanation. Whereas for somebody who has advanced along with his practice entering into Vipassana, the explanation and of the benefits may not necessarily be the same, because they will explain higher benefits or more subtle benefits. And so there are worldly benefits and there are subtle benefits, there are benefits which lead to worldly happiness and there are benefits which lead to ultimate happiness. And so that will be discussed as an introduction then we shall move on to entering into explaining how to practice vipassana which has many parts but the first attempt or the first talk on how to practice vipassana will be about the basic attitude what it is you are attempting to do and how to do it how the basis of how you begin to do the practice what you need for underlying principle and that underlying principle is, to those who know, of course, and to those who don't know, not so, of course, ploy uh, wang, letting go, uh, just to be able to not cling to things and not be drawn along or drawn away from your focus by things if they were some more stressful or exciting or attractive or seductive or whatever they are however they entice you <coughs> to let go of those things and to relax and to become still of mind so letting go that will be talked about as the basis of how to practice vipassana before all other things which come and are part of how to practice vipassana <coughs> After that, one of the most important viewpoints and understand, scientific understandings that are essential in the practice of Vipassana will also be dealt with and talked about, which is called seeing tilakana. Uh, tilakana are the three marks of existence, anichang, anicca, uh, impermanence, impermanence or constant flux, change. Nothing can stay the same born, gets old, sick and dies, or it withers and dies, it fades away, it's forgotten. So anicca is one of the three marks of existence, dukkha, unsatisfactoriness, or uh, unable, also unable to maintain happiness constantly, which is anicca too. But it causes dukkha, which is some people call suffering, so suffering, uh, because if you can't accept the change, then you suffer. And the third one, anatta, not self or non-ownership, nothing is under the control of some uh, omnipotent owner. So you cannot control things, make yourself stay young or keep your new car new or your new clothes new or your handsome face young and handsome, you, you can't. And so that is also, you don't have a self, there is no part of you which you can say that's me, that's what makes me me, that was me before I was born and that goes with me after I die. There is no self in that sense. And there's a non-selfness to everything. So those are the three marks of existence. And seeing it 
in all things and investigating its presence within all things is a very important part of Vipassana and that will be talked about too. After that we will go on to talk about the Potipakiyatam Samsitjet, the 37 Potipakiyatamas, which are of course simultaneous in Mahayana with the practices of the Bodhisattva. Uh, these are kind of qualities or attained attitudes, things which you program into yourself, things which you develop, the causes of becoming, and you become those things. And when you be fully realize, not just believing in and following the rules of those things, but you actually transform and become those things, all 37 of them is the attainment of the same thing as what the attainment of the completion of the path of Vipassana it's one and the same as completing vipassana if you get the 37 body bhakya dhammas if you attain them they'll be talked about too after that we'll be going on to talk about the vipassana poem the foundations of vipassana the basic foundations of practice and foundations of the causes of vipassana which will also be talked about what are the causes of vipassana arising vipassana most people think i'm practicing vipassana actually what we're doing is we're practicing to attain vipassana because vipassana is only when you have attained the things which are listed in the practice which the goals which are aimed for anything below that attainment is not vipassana it is just trying to attain vipassana so what are the causes of vipassana arising? It's the tantamount to saying what are the causes of enlightenment arising? The causes of enlightenment arising are the same thing that causes vipassana to arise. Which is the practice of developing the causes of enlightenment. That is basically vipassana and bodhipakya dhamma. And the bojankas, the seven bojankas, they are the attainments which you reach by attaining the path to enlightenment. That's what Vipassana is about on its highest level. At the beginning we will talk about the benefits of Vipassana. I might say it will bring you happiness, it will bring you good luck in life, you will be more efficient in your undertakings and your work. Those are worldly gains, but actually what Vipassana is about is liberation and self-enlightenment. So I will also be talking about that and what is vipassana which i've just explained in brief uh, this enlightenment and uh, then we will explain the vipassana yana the vipassana yan gao the nine different yanas which are kind of mental moods or states in which one can find oneself existing in where one has destroyed the existence of certain mental factors or where they are not present either permanently or temporarily and that certain moods arise which are prequels to enlightenment and cannot be circumvented as far as I know and so they are, they are views, thing, insights and views which are arrived at and are enlightening, they are like the lifting of veils as well but they can be also troublesome experiences, they are not uh, always merely blissful experiences because there can arise side effects such as doubt and the like which are, are obstacles and so that will also be talked about uh, the f nine kinds of vipassana yana and the solot yan siphok the solasayana uh, 16 different kinds of solasayana there are also mental states and moods or uh, attained circumstances in your experience of being of uh, their mental states and then we can talk about after the vipassanupagilesi vipassanupagilesi vipassanupagilesas the ten gilesas which arise in vipassana which are things which arise because of good practice and successful attainment but which can then lead oneself off on a sidetrack and get consumed in fascination for those things which arise 
which may be mental powers, psychic powers, insights, or knowing the hearts of others, or just having raptures, or being able to do things or see things you have never done or seen before. And we can develop the wrong view and think this is our power and believe wrongly in a self that does not exist, that is powerful and different from others. And so uh, there are dangers which can happen in the practice and they are called ten vipassanupagilesas. They will be talked about too. The kanha, the five aggregates, the five skandhas must be learned as well as tilakana, the three marks of existence and understood to be able to investigate the three marks of existence, tilakana and its presence within those five khandhas which are rup, vetana, sanya, sankha, nya, uh, rupa, form, vetana, feelings, sanya, perception or memory, sankha, uh, condition, things which means the body and conditioned thoughts and aggregates and vinyan, the consciousness, those five things must be investigated in meditation whilst doing anabhanasati, breath, focus, meditation and investigate all five aspects of yourself, your body, your thoughts, your feelings, the perception of feelings, the memory of them, um, your consciousness and all phenomena which you become aware of through those portals, be it smell, taste, touch, vision, sound, or just feelings, reactions to thoughts, and to look for the three marks of existence within them as you are meditating, to see things arising, becoming, and fading, and disappearing, and recognize anicca, the impermanence, and to see the dissatisfactory truth within the fact that all things are impermanent and subject to change and dissolution and cessation and have their end and disappear from all memory and the dissatisfactory state of that dissatisfactory status of all things is dukkha is the second um, mark of existence and anatta to see that there is no self that is perpetual no thing that is never changing including your own consciousness and your own experience, which many consider to be a soul. But there is no unchangingness to anything, and so anatta, non-self, within all things. That is not, nothing is, all things are, but they are without self, they just are. And so, anicca, dukkha, anatta, the three marks of existence in your thoughts, in your feelings, in your perceptions, in your memories, in your conditioned parts, your body is aging, in your thoughts which appear and disappear and are conditioned through co uh, cultural conditioning and human conditioning and are not absolutely universal in their views, and your consciousness which is having an awareness that is changing all the time and can never stay still and see ourselves within tilakana and tilakana within our five skandhas or our five khandhas the five um, different things which compose our existence as humans mm. and that is called sankhan as well which condition things and so we will talk about conditioned things, both the five aggregates of the five khandhas is conditioned and the whole universe as we perceive it is conditioned. After that, then we'll start getting to nitty-gritty with the Dhammanyama Sutta, the Sutra of the Dhammanyama, and explain Sankara, conditioned things, aggregates, explained in various ways as two different kinds of sankhara, two different kinds of conditioned aggregates, which is the five khandhas is conditioned in the three marks of existence, by the three marks of existence, means us, humans, living beings, and it means the whole universe, the whole material universe is also under those three marks of existence, of impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and not-selfness. And then there is a way to see Sankara or the conditioned universe in three ways. Just see 
the three kinds of Sankara and then to finally study how Sankara is contained and under the power of Tilakana and then to turn back again and look at Sankara, the conditioned aggregates, within the Kandas, within the five aggregates of the body and then to see why the Kandas are under the power of Tilakana, our form, our feelings, our thoughts, our consciousness, our perception and memory and our bodies are under the power of those three marks of existence. And then to investigate the things which disguise the presence of the three marks of existence, tilakana, within all things, and why we cannot see it present in an awakened, spontaneous fashion, meaning to see it all the time, to be aware of it, because that is one of the, few, one of the most powerful factors needed for enlightenment. And then I will finish the first of the three parts of teaching Vipassana with explaining the Vipalatsi, Vipalatsi, Vipalasa, the four kinds of insane uh, views which can uh, arise even though hard practice and very good advancement in Vipassana towards Vipassana one of the stumbling stones of which causes vipalat, the four kinds of dangerously wrong uh, views, which can be considered in, in human terms to be insane. And that already gives me a lot of work to do to compose the podcasts and talks on each of these listed uh, topics. And this is the end of the introduction, which is the preface to all of those to topics. So, I hope you got some of that. And we'll check in next time to follow the first real chapter, which will begin, as I said, with the benefits of Vipassana. And I'll go on to the second point of how to practice Vipassana in that first podcast. So... This is Sajjad Spencer, finally beginning a serious attempt at explaining Vipassana, which is so difficult to find out about. And for the Buddha Magic Project, signing off.